All right, Maureen, it's your baby. Okay. Take her away. Okay. Separation at the crown chakra. Okay, here we go. Carl Jung um, is one of my guides. I, I have his book on alchemy. As I've said before, he spent 30 years, last 30 years of his life in study of alchemy. And he said, one does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the dark conscious. And that's shadow work and exactly what we're doing. And these exercises, I hope, will help you move through any shadow work that you have. I got to move this little thing so I can see. Okay. All right. So we're at the crown chakra and we're moving into the stage of separation. One of the most important things about air is the breath of life. So these exercises come from, um, his name is Hawk, I think, H-A-U-C-K. Uh, he wrote the Emerald Tablet, um, one of my reference books, Dennis William Hawk, H-A-U-C-K. And uh, these are the, ex these exercises came from his, uh, his work. And breath practices such as prana, for which Sophia Mona Lisa is a certified coach, uh, or any practice that you subscribe to, like shamanic breath or some of the others. Um, within the error element of alchemy, this is called aeration. You will aerate your brain cells within the crown chakra, bringing in oxygen to assist with clear thinking and awakening dormant spiritual forces. Boy, did we work on that at our gathering. That was really a powerful uh, experience. Not always pleasant, but very powerful. Thoroughly aerated us. <laughs> Okay, once aerated, we sift through the freshness of our thoughts with a new awareness of the stories, assumptions, beliefs we have accepted as part of our true selves. This is called the witness space. It is a place of objectiveness, of being still, of breathing consciously. We simply witness the remaining thoughts and feelings with no judgment. And um, I thought maybe Sophia Mona Lisa would like to talk about her um, her breath prana, if she wanted to add anything to that exercise. Sure. Uh, let me stop the share. Okay. Um, yes. So I was certified, I think it's 12 or 13 years ago in a breath modality called breath of love. Uh, the woman, her name is Julia Mick, who downloaded this particular breath style, had studied under some of the world's most famous breath practitioners um, when she received this breath modality. She's since changed its name from breath of love to soul alignment, S-O-L-I-G-N-M-E-N-T, soul alignment. But fundamentally, it's the same thing. It's, it's a very yin practice of breath work, uh, unlike the more yang styles, such as shamanic breath work, holotropic breath work, rebirthing breath work. Those are very yang styles, meaning they're extremely catalyzing. They're extremely catalyzing for your physical body. Your physical body can have very unpleasant um, responses uh, during those types of breath modalities, specifically a, um, a manifestation of something called tetany, where like your hands will start to like go like this, and maybe even your face will start to go like this. You know, it, it looks like you're having a stroke basically. And it's, it's the resistance trying to move through the body. And because of the Yang style, it's having a challenge uh, moving that resistance, which is why I like 
breath of love and, and the yen modality. Uh, I used to offer uh, breath sessions online. Um, and I'm happy if somebody's feeling like they require a little extra support to do that with you online. The whole intention of the breath is particularly with this modality it is modality is that you're staying in the body you're not allowing yourself to go out of the body to dissociate and as long as i'm keeping you with the breath you're in the body it's when you stop breathing that you start to dissociate and leave leave the body but it goes back to this idea of feeling without judgment, just observing, being in that space of observing what's coming up and allowing it to move through you. And when you do that with the conscious breath, what happens is you'll become aware of how it starts to shift in your body. It may first show up in your heart, but then maybe it moves to your solar plexus. It may first start to show up hot, but then it starts to cool down. It may start to show up itchy, but then it becomes a little more electrical. And so as you're consciously breathing and watching it, observing it, keeping your attention on it, attending to it, it gives it the space to do what it needs to do to shift and let go. So I'm happy to do that for any of you at any point uh, as we continue through this Leo divine royalty goddess journey. If you're feeling really like you need some extra support, I'm happy to do um, a breath session with you online. And that's my gift to you. There's no fee involved. Uh, you just... Let me know and we'll we'll schedule something. Thank you. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. I can. Thank you. All right. Okay, the second exercise is called second attention. It's a sifting technique called. Now, the first attention is the way we think about our world in everyday life, what we look at, what we see, um, kind of a tunnel vision way of thinking. So when we move into second attention, we open a door to different reality parallel reality, separate from our normal everyday life. We defer judgment on what we observe and make room for a more accurate state of health and being. We enter a way of not doing or not participating in the world and halting the internal dialogue. Again, there's the place of stillness. We develop our own intuitive awareness. From a point of second attention, um, sift through what is coming up and notice any preconceived judgments, projections, or prejudices, and write about those in your journal. Okay, any questions or anything about that? Those are really good exercises. Okay, and I, I there's another one that I forgot to make, I didn't, I got it at the last minute and um, uh, let's see, okay, uh, it's called um, Lifting the Veil of the Maya. And the Maya is uh, at the things, you know, that, that we, we use to uh, cover our real essence, to protect ourselves from vulnerability, to, uh, to, hide from people essentially is what what that is all about but um 
what we're doing is stalking. We're actually stalking the ego and the sticky bits, um, the habits and things that, that maybe we hadn't even thought of, patterns that we hadn't even realized that we were in. Um, so what you do is you concentrate on your breath. And I, I will send this to you later because it came to me later. Um, concentrate on your breath, a very conscious breathing and chant your name. The name that you are most comfortable with, the name you identify most closely with. And you chant it over and over and over again. And you think about what does that mean? What does my name tell me about myself that I am not aware of? And I think that that is a really powerful practice. Um, uh, Alfred Lord Tennyson used to write about that, how he would go into a trance and, and he would silently think about his name. And, and he noticed that in those trance-like states, so he was in an altered consciousness, that the consciousness and the unconsciousness became one. And, and he said, virtually within this space, there was no difference. It was all one. And he said, it, he, it brought him to an absolutely, completely different idea of death he said it was practically laughable once the unconscious and the conscious unite. He said there that death is not anything to fear. Uh, and so he he uh, used this throughout his life. He started when he was a child. Um, and, and he's just one example of how that uh, worked for him. And, and it's gonna be different from you. Um, I, I recognize that one of the things in my own uh, experience with my throat chakra is that once I took on my husband's name, I took on a whole new personality, a whole different mask that absolutely hid me. It was not my true self at all. It was just that, just making that my legal name. So while I have not changed my name, Paxton, I have started referring to myself with my maiden name in the middle, Maureen O'Toole Paxton. So that's probably what I would chant. Um, anyway, it, it's, I think it's an excellent um, way of, of getting into your true being uh, learning more about your name, which is very relevant to you in many ways. Um, uh, your name was probably had meaning when you were born. It applied to you. The hopes that your mother had for you, the love she had for you, she gave you a name that was precious to her. And so, um, by chanting that, we're tapping into a lot of things. Um, in addition to that, I would like you to, to keep thinking about your dreams, maybe writing them down. My dream last night, I have a, I have a consistently awful dream about having animals in my home and not feeding them, forgetting to feed them. Now, we know dreams are all about us. Uh, so what is it about me that I'm not nourishing? What is it about me that I am forgetting? Um, and also, in addition to three dogs in my dream last night that I was forgetting uh, to feed, I have a rabbit now. And I had no idea what to feed a rabbit in this dream. Uh, what do I feed a rabbit? So I had to go to the store and buy some rabbit food because I didn't know what to feed the rabbit. But rabbit is my mother. That's how she came to me in her first, right after she passed. 
um, a very relevant uh, dream time just before you wake up. Not quite. Is there? There's a name for it, and I can't think of it. But that space between your deep sleep and your waking state. She came to me as a rabbit uh, to let me know she was okay, and then I knew that was her totem. That was her guide, her animal guide. So last night when she showed up in rabbit in my dream, I knew that my mother was with me. And um, and and that I'm very grateful for that because I I cherish her wisdom. She's a very wise woman. And and um, anyway, so that that is uh, the exercises um, that I have. And um, I also want to tell you what I intend to do, just to kind of give you some resources uh, that I'll, I'll just send to you when they come up. But I want to do um, a list of, of quotes, like the Alfred Lord Tennyson quote that I spoke to you about. I send you quotes as they come to me and by uh, the person that wrote them and then you can learn about different aspects of alchemy through these different alchemists and teachers and I think that's important to do uh it'll give you a little history too on on alchemy history of alchemy is just absolutely mind-blowing um I've been reading a little bit more in uh, uh Atwood's book Mary Atwood Marianne Atwood and she talks so much about magic that one of the problems with alchemy when it got into its dark time was that there was no magic. If you were any kind of uh, person who used magic, you were in big trouble. This is one of the first witch hunts I have ever read about. Mm -hmm. um, some of the uh, alchemists were brutally murdered. Oh my gosh, it was just an amazing thing to read about because I did not realize how closely the philosophers were connected to alchemy and how dangerous it became for them, especially when Christianity started to fight with Islam in the, uh, in the Holy Lands it just became a nightmare. So um, I'm going to try to uh, give you that information as it comes to me and also um, the, a list of definitions. Within alchemy, there is a specific uh, words to use. Uh, and, and I think it's important to know what those are. They may be different than we use them today. So I'll send you some some uh, information about definitions of the words that we use and and maybe that that will trigger something for you um, in your in your studies. So okay, that's that's it for me. So as you were talking about the rabbit and your mother, mm -hmm. I was reminded in Harry Potter about the Patronus. <laughs> <laughs> and how the rabbit is your mother's patronus. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> rabbit is my mother's patronus. <laughs> my niece, who is a huge Harry Potter fan, in fact, she wanted to have a Harry Potter themed wedding, and my sister wouldn't let her, <laughs> has an app that will tell you which house you belong to, which house you're sorted to, what your patronus is, and what your wand is made of. So no surprise that my Patronus is the white mare. <laughs> Not at all. Like Jenny. <laughs> yes, yes. Mine will be the praying mantis. <laughs> okay, so we want to remember that in addition to working with the separation exercises at the crown chakra, we now are going to have to work with, um, whoops, I got ahead of myself, dissolution at the third eye. So I'm guessing 
we just take the shadow pieces that came up at the third eye and um, we firm them. And now we mix them with some of our eclipse water. That's the exercise for the dissolution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then here at the throat chakra, calcination, remembering that calcination is purification by fire. Uh, which feels really awkward in the throat chakra for me. I don't know about anybody else. Did you come up with any ideas about how to work with calcination in the throat chakra? The thing that, no, the thing that came to me was just uh, the name, chanting your name and um, and watching what comes up. Where Where do you feel um threatened if you speak out that's a big one yes um mine is is is, the, is very strange i don't like to listen to my voice and i'm going to put that in the fire i cannot stand to listen to myself talk in a, in a recording so i skip past it um to listen to the other parts. I've always been like that. And it's not the sound or quality of my voice, particularly. I I just am so judgmental on my presentation that um, it it's really, really uh, difficult for me to hear my own voice. And um, I've got I've got to get past that. I really need to work on that. So that's part of my calcination. Um, it's a really good awareness. Watch, watch. yes. Yeah. Well, I, I think it, it, it's an amazing thing. Uh, most people don't experience that. Um, they always say, oh, my voice sounds kind of funny, you know, when you listen to a recording of it and that kind of thing. But but mine is an actual aversion. I do not like to listen to myself. And that in itself is a clue, isn't it? Yep. Of what's going on uh with within me i do not like to listen to myself so i have a lot of work to do and i i would be interested in hearing whatever comes up for you uh in in this field what what it is that you find about expressing yourself uh through your voice mm -hmm. how how does this work mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. And I think that that's a good segue. I'm going to stop the share again. If anybody wants to share uh, what came up at the plural perception, what did you perceive about yourself uh, this time around that you were desiring to put into the fire? I can add that I have a hard time. My brain goes so fast. I can't go back to that part. I'm just totally focused on the culmination of where I'm at today. <laughs> so, but I've been using my voice um, in a way that I haven't typically used it. And I guess I could add that I had a major um, epiphany this morning that relates to the portal of perception. It's how I perceived myself and how I assumed others were behaving, but um, I'm very sensitive to envy and jealousy energy coming at me from others. I've never seen myself as a jealous person or envious. Maybe there's something in there they're hiding, but um, I realized that growing up living through that every single day basically the effect was I just completely felt like I had to hide myself you know don't say anything especially if it was heartfelt don't um, do anything that would cause other people to feel bad about themselves um, anyway I realized that that I've allowed 
that energy coming at me from other people that that I perceive to shut me down, to make me play small in my life, to don't don't dare live, don't do anything that might threaten somebody else, don't say anything, none of that. And so I've kept myself small all these years, and I'm in a situation right now that I'm I intend to break free from. And it was a a very celebratory awareness this morning because it's like, yes, I can do this. Um, I'm done playing, you know, small, just so other people don't have to feel whatever they don't want to feel. And so anyway, I can't really articulate it entirely, but I've, I solved a lot of my problems this morning. <laughs> so, and so it's related to the throat and the portal of perception. It's all connected for me. Yeah. 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 That's really good. And I, I would I, I would like to just add something, you know, as you work with the crown chakra and mm -hmm. as the energy changes, that is the first place energy enters from source through the crown chakra, right? That's going to change everything. All the chakras are lined up and the energy moves down through your crown in you know, through your brow, your throat. And as you change your crown chakra, mm -hmm. You're going to change all of them. The other thing that really helped me is I have this book called Messages from the Body. And given my little escapade in Utah where I fell down those stairs, oh my gosh, when I looked up the meaning of all the parts that had been affected, it was very revealing, <laughs> very revealing. And so that has enabled me to, it's like, I'm giving myself a voice that I that I have been just totally disregarding and ignoring, not paying attention, and I can't live like that anymore, or I will be in the grave quickly. <laughs> so it's a great book. Yeah. If you ever want to know, it's a very expensive book. So if you ever want to know what something means, let me know. I'll <laughs> snap you a photo. Helen, did you have any awarenesses come up at the uh, the third eye chakra? Anything that you're desiring to let go of? Any new perceptions? Well, actually, I, I don't know what to say anymore because um, I put them all in my little heart-shaped bowl that I put all my little sayings in. And I had my ceremony this morning to burn them up. <laughs> and I actually have my ashes water sitting here with my candles burning and all this stuff and I was going to go uh, bury them after we finish this today and start again but uh, mostly it was just uh, it, it somewhat getting rid of purging out things but also finding more joy and happiness and focusing, uh, letting go of a lot of the trash that's going on right now and just focusing on uh, a more glorious future. Excellent. How about you, Nicole? Anything come up for you? So during the past month, yes. Yeah. Uh, my portal of perception. I was like Marine and I hate the sound of my voice. I won't watch myself on video. Like I have a total aversion to it. Um, still do, but not quite the same way. But this last month I've been working through, uh, I don't want to be seen. I don't want to be, um, like even in this group, it's hard because I have an aversion to being seen, to being heard. And it comes from past life experiences and other things that I've been through, but that's what I'm working on. Currently, I just did a whole huge two-hour healing session on myself about not wanting to be seen because any attention brought to me has always brought in negativity. And the negativity is actually what I don't want. The attention is not bad unless it's perceived as bad, you know. So I was just working through what is it exactly? Why do I feel uncomfortable? What is it? you know, inside of me, what's being triggered, like all, and, and it goes back to before I even came here, but it's interesting that we bring certain things like that in with us to work through 
on this plane because the enlightenment that we gain and the perspective and the experiences that we gain while in the physical form, we take with us into and integrate into our whole spiritual being. And the lessons that we learn here are being integrated into the beings that we, and then we bring new parts and new pieces. We're not our whole higher self, right? We're pieces that have been mushed together into this specific task, body, whatever our goal, what, whatever we came here to do. We brought the pieces with us that we work through. And it's this, we're letting go of all of these attachments of what we've placed on ourselves. Yes, I'm a mother, but I don't identify as a mother. You let go of that, right? Yes, I was a teacher, a doctor, a whatever, but that's not who you are. You identified as that, took that on as a false reality about yourself. And it's this process of letting go of everything, all your attachments on this plane to really come and come down to who am I really? And that's really the process that I've been working through. And it's not easy, but um, it brings you closer and closer to that. Who am I that we all want to know? And that's just been my process. So me, I don't like to be seen. I don't really like to be heard. Um, that's why I usually work one-on-one -on -one and I don't do big groups or anything like that. Um, but that's something that I have to work through. That's my journey here. Mm -hmm. And that's part of what I was told I need to work through because I made, my work is made to be put out there. I just can't do it yet because I don't have that inner stability of being okay no matter what comes at me. Mm -hmm. On a small scale, it's okay. On a larger scale, say if I was on YouTube trying to put out information, I don't know that I'd be okay with all the trolls and Christians attacking and, you know, all of these personas that come after you when you start to speak truth into reality. And I'm just not there yet. I'll get there one day. But um, I do notice that. And it comes from persecution in past lives. And you have to work through the trauma of that to move into your purpose and where you're supposed to be going. And that's where I'm at in my process. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. um, I had, of course, that really huge thing happen with the wasps that brought up, you know, all my perceptions around patriarchy. And uh, I can remember because I was so traumatized and my next door neighbor upstairs was there and she, she was even shocked by the the horrificness of of the scene and and said look you should never have had to see this you shouldn't have to clean this up let me do it for you and there were so many corpses of wasps i mean it like it filled a dustpan like in a mound and i was in this space where i couldn't function and she took the dustpan full of wasps and she dumped it over the balcony and I can remember feeling afterward oh my god I wish I had had the presence of mind to say let, let me let me keep them and give them a little burial <laughs> you know uh so over the, the course of the month since that's transpired I have actually found and I don't know if they've sacrificed themselves or what happened but from a you know, a day to day over the past few weeks since this has happened, I've actually have discovered five little wasp corpses at my threshold that somehow kept showing up. So I've collected them and I'm going to put them through my burning uh, process and my calcination and dissolution process for my portal of perception uh, with, with the pieces around the patriarchy. And for me, what I was able to perceive for the first time was a pattern. I had this unconscious pattern that anytime I felt threatened by a patriarchal energy, I would just simply not show up. 
Like if I was going to go to a family event where there was somebody there that I had had a past experience with that was extremely wounding and patriarchal, well, then I just, I would make an excuse for not going to the family event and other things too, socially. I, I just wouldn't show up. I'd just stay home. And I always just excused it as well. I'm very comfortable living a hermetic lifestyle. I'm very comfortable and, you know, I don't feel alone. I, you know, I, you know, I may be alone, but I don't feel lonely, you know, I'm just living more this way. And then it came to my awareness that because I had this avoidance pattern, that part of the hermetic lifestyle was an excuse or a cover up for not having to go out and be socially engaged in spaces that aren't comfortable for me. So that pattern uh, was something that I was able to perceive around my judgments uh, towards patriarchy. So it was, it's been a, 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 a huge, <laughs> a huge chakra clearing. <laughs> I don't recommend it the way that apparently I needed to experience it, but hey, whatever it takes, right? <laughs> That's a good experience. That um, when we move into places where we're uncomfortable in the shadow that it triggers inside of us, that is our, our working point, right? So whatever we gather from that uncomfortableness and we get to go home and work on that and try to transmute whatever is going on inside of us so that the next time that's not triggered, but maybe something else is. And it's a game. It, it is an energetic game that we play in our evolutionary path is, oh good, I'm triggered. What is that about? Let's go look at it, right? And it's just changing it from, well, I can't be around people because they're too negative and their energy interrupts me to, no, let me expose myself to all the energies of the world. Let's see what happens. And then whatever it triggers inside of me, be excited because that's a new piece of you. You get to let go and expand you that much further onto your path and more awakening and more realization and, and all the things. So I think that's, that's a great perception to have, Sophia. Maureen, anything for you specifically? Um, no, not really. No. Yeah. Okay. So we are down here now on Nicole's slide where it's... It's her turn, and um, Maureen, just to give just to give a little background, I sent Nicole that video from Michael Sala, uh, and asked her to watch those few minutes where he was speaking to that piece about the soul trap stuff. So uh, Nicole and I had a very interesting conversation around that, and I'm gonna let her start off with what she'd like to share around all of that uh, before she does the healing work. Okay. So the question that was posed to me is, is there a soul trap, right? Um, so in this video, he's talking, uh, Michael Saul is talking about a young woman or a lady who, who believes there is a soul trap and not to go towards the light because it's a trap. Um, and I can say unequivocally that's, a garbage human fear perception of what happens when we move past our body and when we leave. Um, we are in cycles, cycles after cycles after cycles. Everything is a cycle. Not only is our life a cycle, also the world repeats cycles. So right now the world cycle is moving in towards, depending on where you are in your evolutionary process, either the fall of Rome is being genetically um, activated in your body or the, um, what were the other ones? It was the fall of Rome. The world it wars. The, the world, world wars. Yes. 
one or two, it depending on how long your sleep process was, your realchemization. So when we leave here, we take all of these experiences and we go through a purification process as soon as we leave. So as soon as we say goodbye and we leave the earthly plane, we go up and take all, all our experiences and all of that gets distilled and all of the nonsense, the ego, the mind stuff all falls away in the experience, the true form of experience that we had here. All of these experiences get integrated into our souls, into our beingness. At any time, we can choose to let go of our individual peace and merge up with source at any point. You're never made to reincarnate. When we leave here, it's a different perception of reality. Our human minds can't understand exactly what happens when we leave here. And that's where people are getting confused and they feel like it's a trap. But that comes from a fear-based thinking. And we're not trapped. And that light is us going into our alchemical process of letting go of the humanly um, egoic emotions, all of that stuff fall away. And the true experience of what happened while you were here gets integrated into your beingness. And the people that are coming up and saying that we're in a soul trap and, um, you know, all these beings, these negative beings are eating loose from us and all of these fear programs that people are putting out into the world currently is, is a fear-based human concept of reality. Are there beings feeding on energies from us? Yes, good and bad. Every time you have Think of our bodies like a generator. We are generating energy, energy, energy. And if that energy wasn't output from us, we would explode because we are energetic beings. Angels, things you would call demons, elementals, whoever you're working with specifically, because we're all working with different sets and pieces of, of reality. These beings are actually siphoning energy off of our beings, but it's because we're in agreement that that is allowed to happen. And this has been happening ever since there's been people on the earth. It's just how it is. If you go back to like the 1600s, um, there's a, uh, a, I think her name was Volu Voluptuous, Voluptuous or something like that. There is a, maybe 18, 1600 painting of the Greek voluptuous. And in this photo, I'm going to try to find it for you guys. In this photo, there's these little beings, like a head with wings. And, you know, there's all these different looking beings around her. Those are what you would call the beings that feed from our energy field. They are here to do that. They are here working in concert with us. They are part of our team. And... Yes, they feed off of our sadness and our guilt and our shame, but they also feed off of our joy and our laughter. And we at any point can change who we interact with. And it, by saying, creator, only those who are on my highest path and essential to my work here are the only beings that can interact with me. And you let go because... Some people are like an all-you-can-eat buffet, and any being from the fourth dimension and higher can come and glom onto you and start sucking from you because you have no authority, no power. You don't stand in your own power. And so that being said, this process that we're currently going, that we're currently going through again is a world war cycle, is the fall of Rome cycle. We are on the process of watching everything collapse because it has to. It has to happen. And it's where are you in the process? What are you aware of? And the more you're aware of what's happening around you and you stay out of the fear that everybody's feeding into um, the internet, <laughs> into the things, you're very clear about what your piece is and where you're going and who is allowed to interact with you. Always remember to keep your field sovereign. Only those who need to must interact with me are welcome. Other than that, 
do not just let any being feed off of your essence because they will constantly and you'll be drained of your power and you'll never have your sovereign power to move forward with your work and it just impedes your process. So do you guys have questions about the soul trap that he was speaking of? I don't know exactly. I didn't listen to the lady's work. What I do know is this is not a new concept. This is something that keeps getting regurgitated and they put more fear aspects onto it and make it sound really dangerous and painful, but it's not. It's 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 a pure process that we all do. I've seen it happen. I've left my body. I've experienced things that you know I won't go into, but I'm just saying. It is an essential part of moving to the next phase. It's not a trap. At any time, you can opt out and go back into the oneness that we're all a part of and let go of your individual piece. We are all indiv individual pieces of God's light. It's inside of us. We have control of our lives. We have a decision space. We come here with a purpose, a plan, and we have a decision space where we can make our decisions that move us in any direction. Now, if we get off track and we're not moving towards our path, we do get flopped around a bit. No, 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 you're not doing that right. Come back over here and start working. And that's where the setbacks come. And that's where the um, things don't work. You know, I was trying to buy something online and no matter how many times I tried to push the button to buy this thing, it would not work. So then I just waited and I said, okay, <laughs> there's something here. Maybe I'm not meant to have this. I need to wait. And wouldn't you know, a week later, I got a better deal and a different, and it was better all the way around. The universe was saying, not yet. You need to wait. And then it gives you what you need, right? You're constantly manifesting the next stage in your life with your trust in the universe and yourself in your higher guidance. Does anybody have any questions about that? Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I was wanting to allow space for Maureen because she had texted me yeah. about seeing that and I guess had different thoughts and feelings come up around it. And, you know, I, I had heard that before too, but had never really landed on, is it truth or is it disinformation? It just wasn't really a part of, of my uh, field, but I was curious to get an answer uh, for Maureen. So I, I said I would share it with Nicole because I had a sense in terms of the way that Nicole works with the oneness that if anybody would know, she would know. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's anything, uh, Maureen, from what you shared with me, that's still requiring uh, an answer or clarity, I, ho I hope you'll speak to it. Oh, no, th that was, thank you, Nicole. That was mm -hmm. very helpful. It was almost a panicky feeling that I had. Um, when I read, when I listened, because I listened to Michael Sala, he's always, for a very long time, talked about extraterrestrial uh, life, and and uh, Elena Dunn and I listened to her for a while, and then I went away from her, and now I'm back listening to some of the things she says, and and so when I heard that there was a trap to keep us in a reincarnation cycle. Uh, I thought, wait a minute, I always think you're supposed to go into the light. I mean, that's just the way I believe that we do. It's not like we, you know, are set down in a chair and say, well, where would you like to go now? Do you want to go into the light or do you want to go back? That's not how it works. You know, um, I always thought, just like you said, we we uh, go through a purification um, kind of like a debriefing and and go from there in our next experience it may be on earth it may not be um i i i just had such a moment of panic oh no oh no i've been wrong all this time you know um they they are smarter than me they know all that stuff and then i i thought no that's that's not right sophia has encouraged us to go internal and to feel internally 
uh, about anything that we hear or see. And is that true? You know, is is that's discernment. And uh, once I talked to Sophia and Mona Lisa, I felt better. Um, mm -hmm. And and I wasn't so scared because one of the things with my third eye is, was it was it came to me just it said frightening fear, frightening fear. So I wrote that down just like it came, and I thought where'd that come from? You know, uh, probably a past life, but no matter. Um, mm -hmm. I I I I'm not I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm not ready to start <laughs> seeing all of these alternate ways of experiences once we die i've already i mean I, I i that's one concept i was fairly certain about is that mm. we do pass and our souls do accumulate knowledge as we go and our experiences are are uh, assimilated as they say and so um i know i'm not ready to go back to the one yet i'm i'm my soul is not telling me that you know you're getting close to going back into the one spirit the one uh oneness i know i'm not ready i'm not i still hanging on to my individuality i'm not ready to give that up but mm -hmm. I, I thank you both <laughs> i feel much better <laughs> mm. yes ellen i recommend highly uh Daniel brinkley's books uh, he's had three near-death experiences, and his books are amazing. Uh, that's, uh, that's all the best I can say. I mean, it was amazing. He was struck by lightning the first time, and then, anyway, three times. And uh, the, his stories are amazing, and, and I think you'd find it really helpful about okay. his travels there and back. <laughs> that would be good. Yeah, I know I heard him talk on, uh, I was listening to David Wilcox a long ago, and, and he was on that show. With yeah, David well, I highly recommend his books. They're wonderful and just well, I'll... amazing reads. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, I will. So also be aware as you follow certain individuals. So you, mm -hmm. have, the e you have the ET group, you have the spirituality group, and you have a bunch of groups in between, but all of these are influence operations that are being put out to make you think about things a certain way. Now, it's not truth because they have truth amongst a lot of lies that they put out into the public for people to believe, not believe, discern about. So just be aware that like Michael Sala, David Wilcock, Danny and Brinkley, all of those guys are influenced by people within an operation that disseminate the information and they tell them what they're allowed to put out and what spin they need to put out on it. And I don't think they're bad or they're doing anything negative in any way. I think they honestly feel like this is good stuff that they need to put out and they just don't have the discernment to know what's true and what's not. Or maybe they're just putting it out and letting you decide what you want to feel about that. Um, Precisely. Yes. And so I don't see them as doing anything negative. What I do see is them putting stuff out. Now, here's the information. Take what you want, leave the rest. But people tend to grab on to whatever it is that is said and use that as their truth, even though they haven't gone inside. And does that really resonate with me? Do I really feel that way? Is that something that I believe in? They don't do the process of coming to their truth about it. They grab onto somebody else's truth and lay that on top of themselves like that's their truth too. And I think you have to be very wary because there's a lot of influencers out there that do that, even with spirituality. Taking beautiful concepts of spirituality, breaking them down into maybe negative ways of looking at it, and it skews your vision unless you're able to really do the discernment work and say, what is it about that that feels right? What is it about that that feels wrong? What do I agree with? What don't I agree with? Why do I feel that way? 
that's the most important process of the discernment is why do I feel that way? Is it something that was programmed inside of me as I learned as a child? Or is it coming from another place? And that's the process you always want to use in using your discernment when you're listening to these people, because they will give you some truth, but it's wrapped in a lot of lies and sensationalism for what? For clicks, for money, for whatever it is that they're working through. And so um, just be aware of that. Always use your own discernment. Yeah. To, to that vein, I've shared with a couple of you. You know, yesterday, Elena Denon put out that three minute trailer for her new webinar called The Return of Christ Consciousness. So I thought, hmm, this, this should be interesting. Let me see what this is all about. And I got about halfway through and I was completely repulsed by what she was sharing because essentially she was tying the return of Christ Consciousness to the return of this being whom she calls Prince Ia, whom she claims is the Enki of the Enlil Enki Sumerian myth. And I was like, oh no, no, she's tying the return of Christ consciousness to another external figure of authority. Nope, boom, my shields went like this, boom. And it's the first time, and I will acknowledge this, of having watched anything that she's put out where I was like, nope, complete, complete disinformation. No. And so uh, I was surprised. Uh, but it goes back to, unfortunately, these people get a certain level of notoriety and from my perspective, either from the beginning, they were put in place as infiltrators or they get to a certain level of notoriety and then they become infiltrated and handled. And maybe they're not even conscious of it, but it goes back to how through these strands of DNA that we are activating, our abilities to discern are becoming more and more refined. And it could be, I don't want to tell you what you're feeling, Maureen. It could be that maybe it wasn't fear or panic or anxiety. Maybe it was your discerning saying, nope, this, this, this isn't what I resonate with. It could have been fear, panic, anxiety. I'm just saying, use it as an opportunity to go back and to feel into what was coming up and really get clarity on was it fear, anxiety, or was it my discernment saying, nope, you don't resonate with this? Because I was shocked. I mean, I felt like I needed to take a shower. I couldn't even finish watching the three minutes. Well, I think I told you a while back I didn't tr I don't trust her. Yes, you did. She's, she does, like you say, Nicole, part, she twists truths. <laughs> well, I think the, do, unfortunately. The, the deeper thing that I'm aware of right now is that as a society, we are a herd. And we've been very well socialized to follow the leader, no matter where. And discernment is a muscle that needs to be developed. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you guys, but I never had an opportunity to really develop that muscle until the last couple of years. I began the process of doing that. My saving grace was I was pretty oppositional growing up. I just mm -hmm. didn't want to go along with the freaking crowd. It didn't make sense to me, but I didn't see that as my ability to discern or, or own it as my own, you know, bullshit meter. But I think that's, that's what really needs to be brought to the foreground is that we are cattle. They see us that way. And so it's never been okay for us to think independently. And I remember when I went to college, it used to be that that's where that you go and you learn how to think and to ask questions. They teach you where to, how, where to look to find the answers. And you were encouraged to think for yourself. And I'm telling you in the 
in the um in the late 80s ish that was thrown out and you were supposed to teach what we want you to teach and only that don't allow any other people to influence what you're being what you're teaching and so it was like what the hell is going on here it's not what i thought college was all cracked up to be at all so that's my takeaway of this this lesson business discern yeah. i'm still learning well and it all goes back to what sophia told me during the immersive breath retreat that it's fun to do the cards, it's fun to listen to channelings, it's entertainment, but now we're going to get serious and now we're going to start tapping in to our inner selves, whatever you want to call it, I call it your inner Christo Sophia, and listening to your inner self and start communing with your inner self. You can ask your inner self any question and it will tell you the truth. And that's a part of the discernment process. And that's what differentiates this uh, Leo divine worldy goddess journey from all of the past synodic cycles with Venus. Cool. Does anybody have any questions about the discernment process or um, listening to that inner guidance? How do you know if it's not your, if it's your ego or your discernment or truth? So, so, that's the best way. Muscle test it. Well, you can't do that. That's not testing. even accurate. Huh? You can do muscle testing, though you can fool yourself through muscle testing, too. So what you want to do is you drop down of your thinking brain, you let go of your mind, you come down here to your heart. And once you put your attention here, because this is where you communicate with spirit, you say, is this right for me? Is this wrong for me? Just ask yourself the question, does this feel right? If you feel uplifted or energy pull, it's right. If you get an icky or a uh, feeling, it's no. And so what you want to do is start even, I mean, start tonight by going into the kitchen. Do I want to eat this for dinner or that to, for dinner? Body, what do you want? Do you want this? Does that feel right? Or does this feel right? Doing that constantly is kind of how I trained mine to where now all I have to do is hear you talk. And I can tell you if you're telling me the truth or not, because it is. Mm -hmm. The vibration of who you are when you are speaking truth, and it doesn't matter who it is, if truth comes out of you, it resonates. Mm -hmm. If it's not truth, it makes you feel kind of icky. And you just pay attention to that constantly. And that's how you learn and discern. But you have to stay out of the thinking mind. The mind is always going to distort and lie it's great for human stuff. It's great for driving. It's great for figuring things out humanly. But as far as spiritually in the process that we're learning here, you want to stay out of the mind. It will always confuse, distort. And, you know, maybe that's just the flaw that everybody has kind of fallen into. You get to a point in spirituality where you're like, well, I know a lot. Maybe I'll just start sharing it with people. But then your mind starts to twist things and add or subtract things and it, it becomes distorted in your teachings. And maybe that's where people are falling in this process of disinformation because they're letting their minds access the information and they're going through the thinking mind instead of staying down in the spiritual center and speaking truth. So mm -hmm. always dropping out of the head, into the heart, feeling the resonance within your chest to really tell you where you're going. And the more you use that, the better you'll get. And the more you'll start to know what's right and wrong for you. That's not the same for everybody. Right. That's exactly right, Nicole. And, and so I just want to take this opportunity to remind you, this is why during the immersive breath week, every time we came into sacred circle, the first thing I had you do was put your hand on your heart, do the three slow in breaths, 
and the very slow six exhales to drop from the head into the heart to bring the fields into coherence. And we did that every time we went into sacred circle and I have been reminding you hopefully consistently since then to stay with the practice of dropping into your heart and bringing the fields into coherence because it's from that place that you can trust yourself and move forward. Absolutely. The brain is not your friend. (laughs) It's not your enemy but it's not your friend either. Your brain will always trick, deceive, twist, distort anything you give it permission to. That's why it's my rule to live my life here. Now, if I need to access something here, it's always there, but I always live from my heart center because that is your true self. That is your spiritual presence. And that's really where your truth lies. And so stay here, you can't go wrong. And you're right on your path to lead to the next thing, no matter if you know what that is or not. I have no idea where I'm going. I'm just in the process of trusting and allowing. And from there, it just keeps going and going and going. That's how I met all of you. (laughs) So, um, So if anybody has any questions about that, it's not that these people are purposely trying to deceive or distort it happens because if you trust your mind, you will always distort something because your perception is made up from your world experience and your world experience is, you know, hurtful. You have, you have a lot of distortions around the experience that you live because it's a divide. It's a diverse world we're in, right? Good, bad, ugly, you know, bored, all of the things distort how you see the world if you're living in your mind. If you drop down here and you resonate with truth, you see the truth. Like, yeah, that guy's an asshole, but I see that, you know, he's really got something going on and his heart is shut down. So maybe that's why he's an asshole. And you don't take it personal that he's an asshole because that's that's on him. But you can still stay sovereign and be like, oh, I'm sorry that you're going through that, sir. And keep moving. You never, you don't have to take anything on as it being part of your experience or they're treating me badly because name the reason, right? So it's just good to always stay in your truth center, in your heart center and live from here. And every time you feel yourself get pulled back up here into the spinning thought forms, consciously bring yourself back into your heart space. And try to stay here as much as possible because this is where your power is. Up in your brain, you're splitting your energy. If you're thinking about the future, you're thinking about the past, or even numerous things in the present, think about how many ways your energy is split off. If you come back into yourself, into your presence, into your heart center, all of your power is here and this is your decision space. Instead of a million different energy sources out there, and not knowing where to go. And that's when you get frazzled and um, discombobulated in energy fields. Something I just wanted to share with you guys. So. Yeah. And and this is why I encourage you to bring your hand to your heart. Because the moment you touch your heart, your attention and your awareness goes there. Eventually, you won't have to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. But the more that you use this tool the more you will be heart centered and then it'll be like riding a bike. You don't even have to think about it. Boom. You're here. It's uncomfortable to be there at first because you feel a lot of things and you're just not quite sure. But the more you stay there, the more natural it feels and the more it expands and the more it expands and the more it expands till your whole aura is a heart centered aura. And no matter who you come in contact with, they can feel the love and the nurturing. And, you know, you don't run into as many jerks out there in society if you are resonating at this high love auric field because they don't want to be around that. It hurts. And so they they avoid you at all costs. Now, family's different, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's a different ball of wax, but I mean, there are some anomalies. 
<laughs> that's where that's where our inner work comes in. Ooh, yeah. man, Uncle Jeff just triggered something inside of me. I'm going to go look at that. <laughs> so, okay. Well, good. If nobody else has any questions, let's go into the healing portion of this. Everybody just take some deep breaths in. Bringing your awareness to the center of your chest now. Letting yourself root down into the earth. Just allowing your roots to drop deep within the earth. I want you all to just start to focus in on your heart center and what you're feeling right at the center of your chest. Maureen, can, let's start with you, honey. What are you feeling in your chest right now? Take your time. Uh, a heaviness on the right side, mm -hmm. my right side, right Good. above my breast. Yep. All right. Let's look at that. If you had to name an emotion that this heaviness felt like, what would you call it? Sadness. Mm -hmm. Good. There's a statement in it. The sadness is like, I don't trust myself. It's kind of the statement that's coming. I don't trust myself. What context? I'm not sure, but let's just go into this. I don't trust myself. It's moving into your stomach, into your root chakra. Mm -hmm. Do you have a worry or fear of being wrong, especially oh, in all, group settings? All the time. Yeah, yes. okay. I don't trust myself. Just keep feeling that feeling. I don't trust myself. Because this is a deep aversion to being called out or being wrong. And it feels like you were singled out throughout your life in certain ways um, where this has happened. And it's felt this fear and resistance to actually getting into that. So let's just feel that for a few minutes here. I don't trust you. Good. Stay with that. Let's look. Sophia, what are you feeling, hon? Hold on. <laughs> yeah, you're in the middle of a big vortex. <laughs> um, I'm not feeling anything per se. I'm... I would say that when I tapped into my heart, that I just felt like this light just kind of start like this bright light. That's all. All right. So our collective energy in this healing session is giving you access to reach up and out for some wisdom that you've been asking for. So all I want you to do is stay present in your heart space and expand your crown chakra and let all of that light that's waiting right on top of your head here start to funnel in. It's really going to be some new information for you. It's going to move through your central channel and root down in your root chakra. So just open yourself up to that and see what happens. Okie doke. Okay, Karen. Honestly, what are you feeling? I feel excited. And you feel excited. There's no, <laughs> nowhere for it to go. <laughs> All right, let's look at this. This is interesting. Isn't it's different, huh? Mm-hmm. I 
think the realizations that you went through today has brought this childhood aspect of like excitement up in you. It's like, yeah, I'm getting it. Yeah, I'm learning. Yeah, this is, I'm, I'm really getting it now. It was kind of the feeling I'm getting from you. Yeah, I actually Ooh. felt I felt happy and joyful for the first time this morning when I realized all this. I have more energy. There's a real pep in my step when I walked around the complex. All right. So just keep sitting with that excitement and allow yourself to expand your heart center. There's some more light that can come in and really kind of fill you up in the heart space. So just okay. consciously expand your heart and allow this new light to come in. Let's see where it goes. I don't know what's going to happen. It's okay. interesting. So let's just watch it. Okay, Helen. Helen, what are you feeling? I just feel like I'm exuding peace, love, and joy. And it's sort of making all these shivers down my spine. <laughs> yeah, I see that. Let's look at this. Peace, love, joy. Wow. It's almost like you're being spotlighted by Christed light. So just open your, your um, crown chakra as wide as it will go and just allow all of this light. It's like a light shower exactly. coming down from above. Yeah. Just allow it all to kind of permeate through your body and integrate that. I think today is a huge integration point, especially after the alchemical work that we've done where we're actively taking in new light from letting go of all of these things that we've done in this process. So let's just take that in for a few minutes. I'm going to stay with you, Maureen, and we're going to work through this. I'm going to take half the load so we can process this quicker. So I'm not sure how, Maureen, you grew up exactly, but this this feeling takes me down to the age of three years old. And at the age of three years old, where, you know, everything is exciting and new and, and we're doing a bunch of things. And it feels like I'm being scolded for being exuberant and wanting to do things and... um At the age of three, this belief system of I'm wrong for following my own instinct. You didn't have words for it then, but you've just piled it on since then. So now, so this three-year-old was punished for being exuberant and wanting to do what felt right for it. And interesting that it it's made you to where maybe you don't trust your instincts. Is that right for you? Do you know anything about that age or what you've experienced really young in life? Um, we moved to Germany. My dad was stationed there after the war. Mm -hmm. um, my mom and I, and and there was a lot of fear mm -hmm. in that place, and wow. um, and a lot of anger, and my father was very protective of me. And um, we lived in a neighborhood, not on the base. And another uh, Air Force family lived below, and they had a little boy. And we played together in the yard. 
we were never to leave the yard. And one day we did, we left mm -hmm. the yard and we walked down the street and back again. And my father saw us coming up the street. We were just walking, holding hands, just sort of being with each other and enjoying friendship. And he called out my name. Oh boy, was he angry. And I got such an incredibly hard spanking. It scared my mother. And I know it was out of fear mm -hmm. that, he, that he reacted like that. But I think that that's what happened. I was wrong yeah. and I got beat. You still have that fear in you. We're going to start to pull that out. You feel it in your chest and in your throat. It's like he transferred with every smack. He transferred that fear into you. It's interesting. All right, let's get this out here. This, this fear that you've hung on to your whole life has really distorted your gut instincts. It's all yeah. twisted in it. And so we're just going through the process of untwisting the fear from your natural processes. It's just going to take a few more minutes. <clears throat> Sophia, what star are you talking to? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking to you're talking to a star right now. Um, am I talking to the star itself, or am I talking to like beings in a civilization? No, to the star. Oh. I'm talking to the star, the highest form of um, communication in that realm. You're talking to. Alcona, I don't know. Is there a star named Alcona or Al There's a star Alcyon. Alcyon. There might be a star Alcona. I can check. Check and see. Well, not right now. Finish integrating and talking to the star. It sounds like Alcona, and I it may be off, but that's what it it comes in as Alcona. Whoever you're talking to. On this star, the name is Alcona. It's the only thing I get. And there's a direct beam of light. And you guys are exchanging information. I don't know why, but you are. You mean on the star, it's this, I'm a little confused. Are you saying the star's name is Alcona or whoever I'm talking I to? I think the star is Alcona. Okay. That is, and I don't usually get names, and this is very clear. Alcona is who you're in communication with. It feels like a star. It's got a blue, bright blue, or a white in the center. It's, it, it's very, um, I don't know why it's communicating with you like this. Let me just ask what it's about. Okay.
dead star language. What dead, does that mean to you? Dead star language. To me, mm-hmm. that means a star language that's been forgotten and lost. Yeah. Dead star language. I think it's in the Big Dipper. Ah. Okay. Akuna, Dead Star Language. What is that about? You're being imparted some knowledge from this Dead Star Language. Nobody practices this anymore. This is something that was after the last golden age faded out of existence. That's going to start coming back into existence through people like you. By paying attention to, best I can tell you, is dead star language. And I don't know how that's going to manifest for you, but that's what I'm being told. Okay. I, you know, I don't know. You can't make this stuff up. Alcona. Well, what I'm, when I'm Googling, I'm getting an Altona star and, of course, the Alcyon star. Al. Altona, what is that one? So the interesting visual I'm getting as you read into that is, you know how our star throws off CMEs, Uh the energy fields? It's almost like the stars out there do the same thing and you are capable of gathering information from each one of these bursts when it enters into this plane. It's like you're gathering ancient knowledge from all of these different stars is what it feels like. Is it all of them or just this one? Yeah, that that Alcona star is not a real star. It's this name people are using. Um, Using for what? For like newspapers and companies and stuff. Uh, everything keeps coming back to Alcyon. And so unless I'm pronouncing it wrong, it's A-L-C-Y-O-N-E. I've tried. It could be coming distorted for me because I don't know, but um, Al, what is it? Alcyon? Alcyon? Yeah, that's, I could be pronouncing it wrong. A L. C-Y-O-N-E. Tune into that name. What do you feel? Well, it's the name that came to me right right away. Okay. Um, yeah, it's the brightest, it. it's the brightest star in the Pleiades cluster. Oh, there you go. It's about a hundred million years old. Makes sense. Yep, that's that totally makes sense now. All right. Well, Almost and of like course, you- the Pleiadians are working, as are the Arcturians, are working with us in this galactic New Earth project. Mm-hmm. It's almost like you can interpret the energy blast that you get. Like every energy blast you get, even from our sun, you translate that subconsciously, internally, spiritually. I don't know exactly how. You interpret that into new information, then you in turn give out to others. It's very interesting. It's well, I actually I actually have a series of videos that I did. I don't even know how long ago. What happened was I was in Ojai for my last breath training to get certified as a breath practitioner. We were in the desert. It was freaking freezing. And I, of course, I wasn't prepared for that. And I had gotten up. 
I was cold. I was walking to where we were supposed to have breakfast. And there was this sun shaft coming down on the pathway. And I just stepped into the sun and I put my hands on my chest and I closed my eyes and I lifted my face just to feel the warmth of the sun. And all of a sudden I started getting messages from the sun. Mm -hmm. And I have a series of videos that I did uh, where I started getting all of these messages from, from the sun. Um, and at that time, I didn't know that the sun would talk to people. <laughs> I thought that was kind of weird. Maybe it was my imagination, but it was as clear as a bell. It would be like somebody in the next room talking to you and you know, they're, they're there talking to you. <laughs> yep. Um. Well, it's still imparting some things, so we'll let that continue. All right. Let's see, Karen, how are you doing? What are you feeling? Less jittery? Oh, huh? Oh. Are you less jittery? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, um, what came to my mind was I was always being told to sit still and be quiet as a child. Mm -hmm. And I, all I wanted to do was move my body and, you know, run and play or whatever everybody told me to sit down and be quiet always and this feels a little bit like trapped energy from all of that mm -hmm, good. needing to be whatever and I never learned how to play and I didn't really have very many playmates that I can even think about growing up and so play is not a natural thing I know how to do Yeah, it's like you trapped all of this energy in your spine almost. It it feels mm -hmm. my upper aging. back, right? Yeah. My upper back, the shoulder area, neck. Mm -hmm. My and my tailbone. <laughs> yeah, because you weren't safe to get all this energy out. You you internalized it and kept it. It's very interesting. Yeah. It's all trapped. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue to let this go. I'm going to pull on it a little bit to help it go a little bit faster now that we know what it is. It's in your scapulas. It's in your mm -hmm. spine. It's in your neck. It's in your My jaw, hands. your hands. Yeah, all of it. All right. Keep letting that work through. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 oh. Got a cramp in my right leg. <laughs> You're going to feel some pressure in your lower back, too. Just let that be there. It's kind of working some stuff through. Okay. Helen, how are you doing? I'm doing swell, thanks. You look pretty swell. You integrated all of that light. You're glowing. And I, back to with Sophia, I think it with your star power in our astrology, Sophia, I think it's as above, so below, and it's back and forth, back and forth. That was something I kind of wanted to talk about you, but I think that's what Nicole's bringing up here, is that's kind of what's going on. Yeah. I don't think you do astrology. I mean, you do astrology, but I think you more communicate with yeah, I, I, well, that's, I, stars. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I probably didn't phrase it right, but I think Sophia knew what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, I translate the frequencies from the luminary bodies, which is why, you know, in terms of astrology, my astrology is not like others because I don't really stick to the tried and true this planet and this sign and this house means X, Y, Z. I'm mm -hmm. translating the frequencies that I'm getting from the luminary body. And I was, remember last month, I was really intimidated about doing this work with the stars because there's not a lot of written information about the stars. And a lot of it 
quite frankly, is around these old patriarchal myths. And it doesn't resonate with me. And uh, and you had said something about don't worry about it. You're going to start receiving uh, the wisdom that you need. And so I think Helen's right. I think that what you're describing is how since the last DNA activation, this process has unfolded in terms of communicating directly. With and the vice versa. Yeah, 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 you're right. It is essentially a light language. You guys are, it's like they're shooting light at you. Particle, light, something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, the being that you are, absorb it, transmute it, and then you put the information back out again. It is it is a direct communication from star to you, from planet to you. You're working with the planets, essentially prepared you for now this new phase of working with these stars that haven't been worked with in a very, very long time. I think that's how it used to be. And we're pulling all that energy, those energies back in. Yeah. Re reactivating them. Yeah, I think you're both right. I I, I really do. Um, and and I guess the question that comes to my lower mind is, I remember the one reading I had with you where you said I had this brain and all of these different civilizations were attached to me because this brain that I have is not like any other brain on the planet. And they were kind of like watching to see what I was going to do with this unique kind of quantum brain. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, you have a quantum brain. That I, that's the only way you're able to translate this information. It's like you have an open library in the back of your head. And when you receive this light in, it like pulls the volume and verse and, and the information out of the library that's stored there and comes into your mind. And if you just keep following the impulses and what draws your interest, mm -hmm. you know you're on the right path. Mm -hmm. to figuring out whatever it is it's interesting it, it is so fascinating to see this <laughs> you're our ai monitor <laughs> yeah <laughs> i like yours better than <laughs> out there and let me just say that there is no cap on this ability, Sophia, it goes as far as you want it to go. So as, as long as you use it and you continue to, to grow with the process, it keeps going. It shows me, it just keeps going. And each one of the different stars is willing to impart something different to you for this process. Mm -hmm. Fa fascinating. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and what's fascinating about what you're sharing, Nicole, is it ties into the piece about the star that's informing this particular gate and DNA activation, Al Alfika, the, the information that Maureen has shared from the book that she has, because it's talking about this super level of consciousness where you can tap into all of that and hold it all simultaneously and be aware of it all at the same time. Yeah. Each different planet, star. I mean, I even get like comets. You even talk to comets. The comets that go by the um I don't even know how to describe this to you, Sophia. It's like you you can pick up information from anything out there. Like the galactic information highway. Yeah. There you it's go. very it's very interesting. <laughs> Comets bring their own form of information. So I'll just share this with you because I saw a comet go by and I'm like, what is that about? And as the comet went by, information is imparted. And comets actually affect the energetics of a planet. It brings in um some people think harbingers of doom, but it actually brings in 
different energies that start to grow and it's not doom necessarily it's changes that need to develop and it's so fascinating Sophia I could probably sit here and talk to you about this for hours but I'll I'll stop there yeah what I what I'm hearing is that comets are cedars Mm -hmm. yep exactly Okay, let's look at Maureen again. How are you doing, Maureen? What are you feeling? I'm a hot mess. You know, yeah. uh, I, I'm I'm hearing uh, now what came to me was um, my ears hurt and they're ringing. I've always had ringing in my ears, always. And you know what I think happened? I don't know for sure, but what came to me was I'm hearing my own screams. Oh. Yeah. From when I got punished, I'm hearing my own screams. That's the ringing in my ears. It's never stopped. Could that be right? That could be right. I want you to take a deep breath. Exhale it very long and slow. And I just want you to sit at the bottom of the breath and pay attention right at the center of your chest. We're going to get rid of a big chunk of of this right now. So just deep breath, exhale very slowly, and then sit with the bottom of the breath for a minute. I want you to tell yourself, I surrender. And it doesn't matter what you're surrendering into. You're surrendering to this experience. Just surrender into it. There's some fear holding you back from wanting to go into this. There you go. Just allow. God damn, this is your scream from your whole life. All of the shit you kept inside. You're just afraid to let out because it's like an explosion. Just allow, just allow that to start coming out. Not only is it the outside circumstances that brought the screaming on, but it's all the internal self-betrayal when you didn't listen to yourself, when you changed yourself because somebody else said you were, you didn't look right or you you didn't do something right. Or it, it's all, the, it's external, but it's also this internal betrayal. And it's just this utter frustration inside of you. We're just going to allow that all it's starting to come out or about 30% of the way through it to keep feeling it's in your throat. It's in your chest. It's in your root chakra. Just keep allowing. Karen, you're about 75% of the way through what you're working on. How are you feeling? 
Better. Yes, keep, better. Keep feeling into it. Maureen, I want you to think about the statement, I'm afraid to be myself. And I just want you to sit with that because I don't think it's from this lifetime, but I just want you to sit with that statement. Tell me what you feel from it. Um. I'm, I'm feeling that it was difficult for me to question my faith when I was a child. Yeah. It was not encouraged. But I always had questions. You came in with this energy. I'm trying to follow it back. Let's see what your past life was that brought you into this. like you came from a, a like a life of a, a philosopher it's like you followed the great works but you had to keep them secret it wasn't safe and you couldn't talk to it what the time frame is this It's so funny because you feel like your energy feels like it's in the same spot of the cycle where you were the last time this energetic wave came in. The best way I can describe that to you is like when all of the philosophers and um, alchemists and, and they were all in, in having to be very secretive about their work. It's like you're coming out of that phase in this life where I think you died before it was able to then be kind of um, released back into the world again. You died and now you're in this life and you're bringing the teachings out and you're, um, you're working in all of this stuff that you have past experience in. But there is this fear inside of you still that says it's not safe and it's not okay from a previous life and so i'm gonna i'm gonna work through and pull that out of you because maybe that'll release you into being more comfortable in what you do does that resonate with you at all oh yes very okay. much this isn't your first life in this work it's not even your second life in this work i mean you've had numerous lives and and to you, this philosophy, this alchemy is a remembrance of where you were before. And it's just catching you up. And the more you do, the more caught up you are. And then you can further your work from that point. But you haven't caught up yet. And this fear is holding you back. Remove the blockage. Well, and if I may say so, and I'm sorry to put my two cents in here, but I just want to remind you from your, I think it was your eclipse reading where I talked about that you're going to make your mark on alchemy. That just like Maria Prophetisa had her contribution through her axiom that you 
are going to have your contribution to the body of, of work. And you don't even need to know what it is right now. Just keep following your instincts and keep going with your work. And that'll lead you to the next thing. That'll lead you to the next thing. And um, just keep going in, in what interests and what draws you. Just keep going. As long as you have energy towards it, keep going. Okay. There's something that you're supposed to do before you leave here. I don't know what it is, but it has to do with your work. The great work is what I'm being told. Okay. Thank you. Starting, yep. Starting to clear and kind of release. Give it 15 or 20 more minutes to kind of rebalance out. We had to get real deep into this life and even your past to really bring this forward. And I think now that it's in your awareness, mm -hmm. you can do your process to finish getting rid of all the remnants that are still left. You have some sticky parts still, but <laughs> you parts. can uh, you can get those out on your own, I think. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sophia, you look like you're good. Karen, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, although I can tell you, I feel like I have barnacles attached to my tailbone. There, there There's just something very pointed there. Let me look. Old, old stuff. It's interesting. Let me see how I'm going to put this into words. Hold on. <laughs> Language is so hard when you're working in this kind of stuff. Okay. Feels really um, twisted. <clears throat> like energetic scabs in a way. It's like you are injured. Feels like a, it feels like there's another octopus in that area. All right, let's look. Because I feel it up on my right hip area. A tentacle. I feel it down. Yeah. It's in your lower chakra. It's in your first two chakras. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. What are we going to do here? All right, we're going to do that that saying again, and all of you can go follow along with this if you want to, because this is this is how we get rid of unwanted things that are attached to us, right? So, Karen, I want you to say, Creator, Creator, I now detach. I now detach all beings, forms, all beings, or energy. All beings, forms, or energy that aren't in my highest purpose. I aren't in my highest purpose. I release them now. I release them now. And creator, I ask for your protection. And creator, I ask for your protection. That they not be allowed to reestablish connection with me. That they not that be allowed, allowed to reestablish re connection with me. with me. And so it is. And so, so it is. is. Just let your let your energy field purge out all of these beings. You feel how your energy field just got a lot more stable. I what I'm noticing is um, tingling in my hands. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that I would call it stable, but I'm feeling something. Yeah. Your energy field stabilized. And so it's not waving anymore when you come into contact and it, it's, a, it, there are beings that are allowed to do this and, and that we work with that are in our groups. 
there are beings that just want a free meal and will glob on to you. But this is interesting. This this thing that keeps reattaching to you. Yeah. I'm gonna look at right now. It's it, it's like an octopus, and it just likes to stick its tentacles into you. Yeah. Like uh, like how a snail suck suckers. That's why I said mm -hmm. I feel like I had barnacles in my tailbone. Mm -hmm. This one is feeling on a a, a, a sense of I'm not safe. Mm. So we're going to heal this spot. I'm not safe. And it seems to be tied to any time I start to feel really good about myself. Boom, bingo. It's not safe because you were never safe to feel good about yourself growing up. Therefore, it's an automatic response. It's been ingrained in you that we just have to change the, the mental chemistry, right? The neural pathways to allow you to be free and to feel safe and to feel joy and peace. And it's just a, it, it's a pattern that you just need to keep catching mm -hmm. to rewrite, right? We're just rewriting this program. Our bodies are like electricity. We are electronic beings in a way. And el electricity flows through the most allowance path, right? The paths mm -hmm. that are already established, the, the easy paths that go through. And in order to... Mm -hmm change our thinking and um, our mental plane, we have to cut off the old paths that bring us down and um, keep us trapped in playing small. And we reestablish paths in joy, in love, in all of the other things. And it rewrites that circuitry to where now your default will be love and joy and you let go of the the lower, denser, uh, fear aspects of things. And it's just, it's going to be a constant process of cleansing your field, catching your mind and mm -hmm. making a choice to go in the other direction. It, it's just going to, it's going to take a little bit of work, but you can do it. Right now there's some ugly stuff showing itself. Mm -hmm. What do you see? Well, let's just say I'm screaming. Okay. I know exactly what you're Powerless. talking about. Yep. Powerless and screaming. An internal scream, though, because you had no ability to actually let your voice out. And so I just collapsed mm -hmm. somehow. I am powerless. I find it fascinating that at this throat chakra activation, portal of communication, both Maureen and Karen are tapping into this inner screen. Mm -hmm. This is fascinating to me. Yeah, the inner screen we weren't allowed to have. <laughs> oh. A couple more minutes starting mm -hmm. to clear. It is your whole throat chakra is just clogged. Mm -hmm. It's on fire. Its way through though. Yeah. <clears throat> the roof of my mouth is like, ugh. Mm. So even that screen creates a kind of a calcination process. Yeah. Any kind of energy that you have can do that. Whether you let it out or keep it in, it's still there. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a body memory. Mm -hmm. It's in your DNA. Mm -hmm.
This is quite the trip. <laughs> what do you think? I'm something pretty crazy. Well, I I don't think I should say. Okay, so there's an interesting older bald man that's coming into this. I, I don't know if he's related to you. Do you remember an older, this is when you were young. So it was old when you were young, maybe like a grandpa. Um, Could have been an, an uncle who, he was a carpenter. Old, bald, craggy, yeah. Yeah, he was caustic, comes to mind. It makes my stomach hurt. Mm -hmm. My head hurts. Mm. Yeah, my head hurts too, but I want you to funnel that energy from your head down into the heart. Just let it start to move down into your heart space to be transmuted. The rest in your frontal lobe, that's all thought forms and energies that are being released kind of tingles and it itches a little bit. Just let mm -hmm. all of those kind of come out. Okay. You're letting go of all of those old thought forms that were attached to all of these energies. I don't know what this craggy man is about. Let me see. Craggy. I need a definition to that. That just came up. <laughs> craggy. I've never used that word before. Craggy. <clears throat> Like he's imprinted on you for some reason. Well, it's my mother's brother. Oh, well, that would make sense. I need to say more. <laughs> nope, that makes complete sense. Mm. Let me get rid of this. He's kind of like a snake. Yeah. Like, I don't even want to catch his eyesight. Like, I want to hide and not let him even look at me. It just feels yeah. Blech. He was a cigar smoking, self centered, all for me kind of guy. He's got a grossness to him that I don't like. Mm -hmm. Uncle Bill. Mm, there you go. Mm. When you said that Uncle Bill, did you feel that energy in your chest and in your throat? Mm. You may not have. That's all right. I'll just get rid of yes, it. Yes, I did. Yes. Maureen, how are you feeling? Um, much better. Good. Yeah. It's going to take you. a few more minutes to kind of rebalance out, but you got rid of a, a good chunk of stuff today. Good job. Thank you. Helen, how are you doing? You still good? I'm good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sophia? Yeah, I'm great. Thank you. Okay. Let me just finish this with Karen real quick. Then if you have any questions, you guys feel free to ask. Karen, if you're willing to stay with this process, you have three things coming up in your sacral chakra that yeah. are attached to the rest of these energies. If you can just stay and process this energy, these things are going to follow and okay. you're just going to go through a purge today. You need this purge. Um, mm -hmm. 
So if you can stay with this feeling, you're, you're going to kind of come back into yourself in about five minutes. After that, if you can stay with the feeling in the sacral chakra and just continue to let these things out, you're going to further your process a lot in that. Mm -hmm. If we move on to the activation, I don't know if I can bring myself back into it. All right. I'm just going to pull it out, see what I can do. After we finish the activation, mm -hmm. give me a call directly afterwards. And I want to go into this with you because there's some information here and there's stuff that we need to look at. Okay. Deeply personal stuff. It's in okay. your sacral chakra. Yeah. So let's move on to the activation part. And then um, you and I will talk after this. Okay. Thank you. Good work. Thank you, Nicole. Wow. All of you did incredible incredible work uh thank you nicole for facilitating that it was really super potent every time we do it it seems like it gets stronger and stronger yeah <laughs> yeah it's like everybody's going deeper and deeper <laughs> mm -hmm. okay i know it's tough to switch to switch gears from that and so let's just take a few Cleansing breaths. Dropping back into your heart to just allowing your heart light to clear your field. Feeling yourself connected to the earth grid. Feeling yourself connected to the galactic star grid. Feeling that inner flame becoming larger and larger until you're completely contained within its pillar of light that stretches from the galactic center all the way to the heart of Gaia. And I claim this space for the Sophia Christ Consciousness. I call in the Cosmic Sophia and Mary Magdalene. I call in the Cosmic Christ and Yeshua. I call in our Arcturian and Pleiadian star brothers and sisters that are assisting with this Galactic New Earth project. I call in the light frequencies of Alfika, of the Corona Borealis constellation. For everyone here, I call in our mentorship councils, our galactic teams, our spirit allies. I call in all of the Venus Temple Guardians. And I call in all of the Christed beings 
who are desiring to hold space for us as we do this activation. And together we will do the great invocation. From the light of Sophia Christ consciousness and from the mind of the creator, allow light to stream forth into the minds of all humanity and allow light to descend onto earth. From the love of Sophia Christ consciousness and within the heart of the creator, allow love to stream forth into the hearts of all humanity and allow love to descend onto earth. May the Sophia Christ consciousness fully return to earth. From the center of Sophia Christ consciousness, where the wisdom of the divine and the will of the divine are known, allow divine wisdom and divine will to stream forth into the experience of all humanity and guide us through our hearts. From the center of the collective consciousness of humanity, allow the plan of love and light to prosper and may it help us all transcend into higher levels of awareness. Allow love, light, divine wisdom and divine will to flow through us and restore the most benevolent plan on earth. And so using your quantum quartz crystal technology, which hopefully you have programmed to reconnect the 16th strand of DNA within your divine template with the 16th strand of DNA in your physical body to regenerate and reactivate that 16th strand of DNA and pulsing on the vortex of your crystal which is the union of Christ and Sophia, activating that love frequency, directing the Christ end of your crystal towards the palm of your left hand, holding the intention to embed this program within the quantum field through the frequency of love, that is flowing from your quartz crystal, feeling within your left palm that program as it's being installed within the quantum field, knowing that that 16th strand of DNA has been fully reconnected to your 16th strand in your divine template, and is now fully regenerated, fully reactivated, fully back online, giving you complete and total access to your unique spiritual gifts that are encoded within your 16th strand of DNA. Continue to use your quantum crystal quartz technology until you feel that the installation into the quantum field is complete. Bringing your left palm to your heart center. 
Breathing in to the heart. Slow exhale, allowing the resonance between the fields to balance out. And asking your inner flame, your inner Christo Sophia, what does it want you to know about your 16th strand of DNA? When you're feeling complete, you can very gently come back to the space where you were sitting, very gently wiggling your fingers and toes, very slowly coming back in, very slowly opening your eyes. And if anybody would like to share their message from their inner Christo Sophia, feel free to do so. Mine's right. I felt like it was a spark transmission. <laughs> it, was, it was, yes, you activated, go forth and prosper. <laughs> That's hysterical. Thank you for sharing that. And they were all laughing. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Anybody else? No, it was super powerful. I, I'm still integrating mine. Um, it, it it was pretty powerful today. I don't know why today was so powerful with everything that we've done, but I mean, just wow, with the energies that are coming through. Yeah. I was told that whatever it was that you were talking about regarding this dead star language, mm -hmm. that it's related to my 16th strand. Because remember the gate activation was on the ninth. So that was just three days ago. Mm -hmm. So while we're actually doing the physical ceremony here, <clears throat> we know it all happens in the eternal. Now the strand was really, you know, already turned on so the gifts are already mm -hmm. flowing forth uh so that's what i was told that what you were talking about regarding that dead star language is a part of my 16th strand of dna that's incredible 
Plus yesterday was 11-11, some portal. Yeah. I don't know which one, but some portal was open. <laughs> Transformation. I have a sense because of um, we've reached this point now. It started with the 15th strand of DNA. But from this point forward, because we're dealing with such refined frequencies, that it's like happening faster than a blink of the eye. It's like almost instantaneous because of the level of frequency that we're working with. That resonates. Mm -hmm. Anything to share, Maureen? No, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> It's okay. You might hang up from this call and get a aha. <laughs> you never know. No. Yeah. Kind of how I feel too. It's like in my field and it's starting to, you know, integrate, but I don't have any messages or anything from it, but I do feel it all around me. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So. I always get ahead of myself. We've already done the sharing part, unless anybody has <laughs> anything else to share. And I guess that was everything. Sounds good. Good work today, guys. Yeah, this has been intense. It's wonderful. Thank you. Wow, and we did it within the four hours. So. Woohoo! <laughs> We're getting, getting better. <laughs> getting more succinct. <laughs> I tell you, it's it's a it's a fine line because you want to allow space for the process to unfold authentically and you want to create a container so we're not here, you know, all week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So everybody did great work. Good stuff. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks everybody. Good to see you all. Good to see you too. Um, I want you to know I did put on Patreon for the third tier only uh, the three part video series I did on all of the messages that I got from the sun. So mm -hmm. they're there for you to enjoy. Ooh, <laughs> thank you. Yay. Wonderful. Thanks. Nice. <laughs> Wonderful. Keep listening to your star language. I'm interested I will. To see where this takes you. <laughs> yeah, I'll be excited to see where it takes me. So. All right. Thank you guys so much. Bye. Yeah, thank yeah. you. I'll get these recordings up as quickly as I can. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>